that eventually led to the Pulitzer Prize. Gwendolyn Brooks' poems changed the way people looked at poetry because she filled her poems with characters relatable to all and not just the South Side of Chicago, but all over the world. And after being the first African American to win the Pulitzer Prize, is remembered not only for her win, but for her special style of poetry that brought African Americans out of hiding and showed them to the world. Gwendolyn Brooks' talent for writing started at an early age. When she was only 13, her first poem was published in American Childhood Magazine. It was titled, Aventide. When the sun sinks beneath the mountains, and the sky is besprinkled with color, and the babbling brook is peacefully still, with gentle, silent ripples now and then, when the air flowers bring forth sweet odors, and the grass is uncommonly green, when the air is tranquilly sweet, and children flock to their mother's side, then word leads and comfort presides, for all know it welcoming evening. After working for a weekly poetry column in the Chicago Defender, Brooks published her first book of poetry in 1945, titled A Street in Bronzeville. It follows the lives of normal African Americans in Bronzeville, the Chicago neighborhood in which Brooks grew up in. It doesn't follow anyone important, no famous people, just African Americans being themselves. The Ballad of Chocolate Mabby. It was Mabby without the grammar school gates, and Brad Mabby was all of seven, and Mabby was cut from a chocolate bar, and Mabby thought life was heaven. The grammar school gates were the pearly gates from Willie Boone went to school, and she sat by him in history class with only her eyes were cool. It was Mabby without the grammar school gates waiting for Willie Boone. Half an hour after the closing bell, he'd surely be coming soon. Oh, warm is the waiting for joys, my dear, but it cannot be too long. Oh, pity the little poor chocolate lips that sang the bubble of song. Out came the softly bold Willie Boone. It was a woe for our Mabby now. He wore like a jewel a lemon-hued lace with sand rays loving her brow. It was Mabby alone by the grammar school gates, yet chocolate companions had she. Mabby on Mabby with hush in the heart, Mabby on Mabby to be. It didn't take long for people to notice Brooks's amazing talent for poetry. Only her second book, Annie Allen, published four years after A Street in Bronzeville, won one of the most notable awards in literature. The 1950 Pulitzer Prize went to none other than Gwendolyn Brooks, first African American to win the award. Annie Allen followed the same sort of style as A Street in Bronzeville, but was following normal African Americans in their daily lives, but this time follows just one girl named Annie throughout her childhood to young womanhood. The Ballad of Late Annie. Late Annie in her bower lay, though the sun was up and spinning. Flush brown shoulder was so bare, flush brown lip was linen. Out then shrieked the mother dear, be out of fetch and carry. Get a broom to wish the doors or get a man to marry. Men there were and men there be, but never men so many cheap enough to marry me, thought the proud late Annie. Whom I raised my shade before must be Gus and Lacker, with melted opal for my milk, pearly for my cracker. Brooks was just not, not just the first African American to win the Pulitzer Prize, she was also a woman. Having a female African American win such an award was a huge milestone for the arts. She centered her poetry around relatable characters, and this, the win helped spread word of her unique style. Her most famous poem, We Real Cool, takes a look at the young, rebellious children in the south side of Chicago. We Real Cool, the pool player, seven at the going trouble. We real cool, we skip school, we strive straight, we mercolate, we sing sing, we thin gin, we jazz june, we die sin. Brooks said herself, she, her poems are not against whites, but for blacks. This meant that her poetry took a more suggestive tone, and it wasn't as hateful towards Caucasian people. She, uh, and even though her poetry was more um, about normal African Americans in their daily lives, she still had a deep appreciation for African American, monumental African Americans like Winnie Mandela, Medgar Evers, or Langston Hughes. Langston Hughes is Mary Glory, is salutary, yet grips his right of twisting free, has a long reach, strong speech, remedial fears, muscular tears, holds horticulture in the eye of the vulture, in firm profession, in the compression. In mud and blood and sudden death, in the breath of the Holocaust, he is helmsman, hatchet, headlight, sea, one in the exotic time and ever, till the air is cured of its fever. Brooks inspired.
inspired writers and readers across the country. She, because she used this, um, the style of write, writing characters that were more relatable towards people, people could see themselves in her poetry, and her poetry wasn't as hateful towards Caucasians. Some people even ha felt a deep connection to Brooks through her poetry. Gwendolyn Brooks, a mellifluous, bucolic name, though no pastoral issue, a city-centered poet whose clarity of vision crystallizes hard black reality into fine dining. Gwendolyn Brooks's poems changed the way people looked at poetry because she filled her poems with experiences as a child in the South Side of Chicago, and after being first African American to win the Pulitzer Prize, is remembered not only for her win but for her special style of poetry that brought African Americans out of hiding and showed them to the world. Because Brooks wrote about the daily happenings of African Americans, she let her readers find themselves in her poetry without being as hateful towards Caucasian people. She, and it, though it was 19 years before another African American won the Pulitzer Prize, if Brooks had not shaken up the U.S. by being the first African American to win the award, blacks may still be the minority in life with, in poetry without the same fame or recognizing.